Welcome to the new session and today we will discuss how to determine the critical gap at roundabout using the procedure given in Indian Highway Capacity Manual. And this critical gap and follow up time, if you recall, I discussed these concepts in one of the earlier sessions and the link for that session is given in the description box. If you have not seen that, please watch so that you can understand and appreciate what is critical gap and follow up time. In reference to roundabout, the critical gap or critical headway is the minimum time gap in the circulating flow that will allow intersection entry for one vehicle. And this critical gap is such that a driver will reject all gaps that are smaller than critical gap and will accept all gaps which are larger than critical gap. Similarly, follow up time is that if the gap in the circulating flow is long enough, then more than one vehicle will enter from the same approach in that gap. Then time headway between two vehicles entering the circulating flow is the follow up time. And the lag is the gap seen by the first driver approaching the roundabout from an approach. Now here in this photograph, if you see a vehicle entering from this approach will require some gap between the vehicles to merge with the circulating flow. Now that minimum time required to safely merge with the circulating flow that is called the critical gap. And if this gap in the circulating flow is long enough like this, then more than one vehicle can enter from the approach. Then the time headway between entering vehicles is the follow up time. Now critical gap is required for estimation of entry capacity of an approach. And there are several methods in literature to determine the critical gap. I told you in my earlier session that critical gap cannot be measured in field. It can only be estimated using some statistical approach. The approach which is used in the Indo Highway Capacity Manual is that of root mean square method. And the concept is like this. So if you plot the community probability function of the highest rated gap, FRT, and of accepted gaps, FAT, then the distribution function of critical gap, FCT, must be positioned between FRT and FAT in such a way that the root mean square of difference of all accepted gaps and all rejected gaps from FCT is minimum. You can understand this concept using this distribution. Now, this is the theoretical distribution, the red, red line of all rejected gaps. So we call it FRT. Similarly, this blue distribution is for accepted gaps. So what it assumes that the FCT, the distribution for critical gap would lie between these two distributions. And this is the difference of rejected gap and critical gap TC minus RI. And this is the difference between the accepted gap and the critical gap. Remember, Ri is less than Tc and Ai is more than Tc. And this difference should be minimized throughout the distribution. So underlying assumption is that the difference between predicted value and baseline value follow a normal distribution. And therefore, it will minimize the square root of the mean squared deviation of rejected gap value Ri and accepted gap value Ai from expected critical gap value Tc to give the average critical gap value. The method requires only two sets of data, highest rejected gap and accepted gap. For the estimation of critical gap, this method is different from maximum likelihood method in two aspects. One, 
it does not make prior assumption of consistent drivers which is always untrue for real world situation and two it does not fail even if there is no rejection of gaps which is very common in mixed traffic conditions because in that case you can always put value of ri as zero now this function can be written like this that to minimize the square root of difference between ai and tc and difference between tc and ri that is the average difference that is the average of square of differences and you sum you take sum of all these values and minimize this value now this can be done either the tool box in matlab or using solver function in the ms excel sheet now let us take one example that these are the pairs of rejected gap and accepted gap of drivers at a roundabout now all these values are taken from the field highest rejected gap and finally accepted gap and i will explain how the function solver can be used in ms excel to get the value of critical gap here to use solver function in excel sheet open ms excel and here you can write our i rejected gaps a i accepted gap and then put the square function so enter all values of ri in this column ai in this column and then you can calculate rms by writing the formula in this toolbar so you get the rms values for each pair of rejected gap and accepted gap and this is the sum of all values now the function is to minimize this sum of root mean square errors now this is the average of all accepted gap values and it is always good idea to start the iteration with initial value of average of all accepted values now if you want to use solver function here go to the data and here you will find the solver function if you do not find this solver function in your system you can add this function by going into file and then options and then you can add in here and if you do not see this solver function here you go to the manage and then you will find this function here so select solver here and then go and say okay so select solver function and set objective now objective is to minimize this sum of rms values so select this value here okay that is g20 now the minimization we will not maximizing here but we are minimizing select minimization by changing the variable cell so we will be changing this cell value that is the gap and then you solve so immediately you get the value of critical gap as 4.42 and this rms value has now reduced to 31.2 now the critical gap value is obtained as 4.42 second now this critical gap value will depend upon the geometry it will depend upon the type of vehicle also in indo scm this critical gap value is estimated for cars only and therefore the analysis is based on the passenger car unit values the critical gap will vary with the diameter of center island and this is the table given in indo scm to get the value of critical gap for a passenger car for different geometry of the intersection and this follow up time should be measured in field and this is taken as 75% of critical gap value so friends in this we have discussed the procedure for estimating critical gap from field data as given in indo highway capacity manual you can write your suggestions in the comment box 
and you can subscribe the channel so that you get notification for every video which I upload every week. Thank you so much.